Hello guys, it's Beemoth here and I got something a bit different uh, today. I've actually got something a little bit more historically. Because I found some a little bit of a page on um, Facebook called World War II Colorized Photos and it's colorizedhistory.com uh, It's just an, a group of people that actually uh, colorized the historical photos from World War II era and even the World War I era now. They've got a really, really amazing stuff, so if you have time, just go take a look, give them a like, give them some support, because what they post is absolutely amazing. They on do not only post uh, really nice photographs, colorized by themselves, they also post a little bit of history uh, with photographs. Sometimes it it's about the event that is happening uh, that uh, during the time that the photo took place, or about some of the people that actually stood in the photographs and today I want to talk about um, one of them you see right here it's uh, David Vivian Curry it's actually a major major David V Curry he's on the left hand side with the handgun so I'm gonna read a bit out that's actually just straight from the horse's mouth from themselves so here we go so on the left side uh, with the handgun is Major David V. Curry of the 29th Canadian Armored Reconnaissance Regiment, the South Alberta Regiment. He's in conversation with R. Lowe of the C Company at the time of the men's of the 2nd Panzer, Panzer Division, commanded by Houtman Siegfried Rauch. And they are surrendering to Ma Sergeant Major D. Mitchell in St. Lemaire sur Dives. It was actually the last village that uh, had to be taken before they actually could close the Velas pocket. The Velas pocket uh, was a pocket in Normandy, just after the D-Day, and it trapped thousands of German soldiers in there, uh, leaving nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and needing them to surrender immediately. So, Majors Major Curry's original citation was a distinguished service order by the commanding officer of the ATR, SAR, so again, SAR, Lieutenant Cole Wotherspoon changed it to a Victorious Cross on or about the 22nd of 1944, 26th of August 1944. The citation is reproduced, reproduced in it entirely below. Well, the SM. The SPM-10s are noted as being in Curry's task force. They in fact ended up with the RHQ on Hill 117 and were not in the village of St. Lamar themselves. From, from the time he was awarded the Victoria's Cross, Major Curry himself stressed the fact that any of the ASO, SAR squadrons could have done the same job he did in St. Lam Lambard. He took pains to ensure that the battle in St. Lambard was viewed in its proper context that being as only a single part of the whole regiment to battle. On 18th of, 18th of August uh, 1944, C Squadron of the 29th Canadian Regiment, SAR, with on the command B Company H and SH of C and 1 Troop uh, 70 pounders of Fakeld and the tank gun, was ordered to advance to St. Lebar sur Dives to cut the uh, trans escape route. Major D. V. Curry, so Major David Curry, was in command of this force, the strength of which was 175 all ranks, 15 tanks and 4 self-propelled anti-tank guns. By uh, 2100 hours, so 8 o'clock at night, the armored element of the force moving in advance of the infantry had reached the outskirts of the village where it was engaged by strong enemy forces. The two leading tanks had entered St. Labar but had been knocked out by 88mm guns. The crews were unable to get out of the village. Major Curry realized that only by immediate infantry attack could the village be captured that night, and since the supporting infantry had not yet arrived, requested permission to dismount his squadron and attack the enemy position on foot. This request was not granted. At last light, Major Curry was given permission to proceed into the village to uh, recon to uh, reconnaissance the enemy defenses and to exit, exit, so again, extricate the crews of the disabled tanks. Although his approach route was under heavy mortar fire, he proceeded into the village on foot through enemy outposts, made his reconnaissance 
and personally directed the evacuation of the tank crews, remained until they were clear and then returned to his headquarters. On his return, the supporting infantry and anti-tank guns had arrived and Major Kerr personally visited them there visit their positions to coordinate their defenses and recite their weapons to cover all possible enemy approaches to his position. He then reported to his commanding officer and was ordered to attack the village at first light in the following morning. At 05.35 hours, at na on 19th of August, and 10 minutes before the attack was to start, he was advised that the expected artillery support would not be available since the guns were out of range. Nevertheless, Major Corey personally led the attack in the face of intense opposition by enemy armor, artillery and infantry, and by noon succeeded in reaching a point of approximately halfway into the village. Here, realizing his attack was losing it impetus, his impetus in the face of increasing enemy reinforcement, he decided to consolidate his disposition before proceeding further. He organized the position accordingly and again made a tour of weapon pits gun sites and tanks. Encouraging the man by his calmness, his sound orders and his complete disregard for the numer numerical superior su superiority of the enemy. The enemy promptly counterattacked his position but so skillfully had major guard defenses been organized that the attack was repulsed with severe casualties to the enemies. During the following 36 hours, a series of further counterattack increased in strength and ferocity throughout the period. They were successively beaten off in very hev heavy fighting by the stubborn resistance of Major Curry's forces. At dusk and 24 August, from the squadron position, enemy infantry could be seen massing for an attack which later proved to be the final effort on the enemy's part. Major Curry personally sighted one troop of tanks to engage this force and directed their fire so effectively that the attack was never mounted. The destruction of this attacking forces of this attacking force was the turning point in this action. During the morning of twenty first of August, eighteen hundred of eighteen hundred all ranks from this force alone surrendered. So eighteen hundred from that attacking force alone already surrendered. By noon the German morale was broken and major Kurdish forces had completed the capture of the village. As a result the trans escape route was completely denied to the remnants of the two German armies. Throughout the three days action, throughout the three days action Major Curry's conduct and self-sacrifice were a magnificent example to all ranks and of the force under his command. On one occasion he personally directed the fire of his command tank onto a Tiger tank, which had been harassing his position and succeeded in knocking it out. During another attack, while the guns of his command tank were taking on other targets at longer ranges, he used a rifle from the turret to deal with indif individual snipers who had infiltrated within 50 yards of his headquarters. On the one occasion when reinforcements were able to get through to his force, he let the 40 men forward into their position and explained the importance of the task as a part of the defense. When, during the Next attack, these new enforcements withdrew under the under the intense fire brought down by the enemy. He personally collected them and led them forward into the position again, where, inspired by his leadership, they held for the remainder of the battle. His employment of his artillery supports, which became available after his original attack went in, was typical of his cool calculation of risk involved in every situation. At one time, despite the fact that short rounds were falling within 15 yards of his own tank, he ordered fire from medium artillery to continue because of its devastating effect upon the attacking enemy is in, in his immediate area. During this operation, the casualties to Major Curtis forces were very heavy, however he never considered the possibility of failure or allowed it to enter the minds of his men. In the words of one of his non-commissioned officers, we knew at one stage that it was going to be a fight to the finish, but it was so cool about it, it was impossible for us to get excited. Since all, since all the officers under his command were either killed or wounded during the action, he had virtually no respite from his duties and in fact obtained only one hour's sleep during the entire period. Nevertheless, he did not permit his fatigue to become apparent to his troops and throughout the action took every opportunity to visit, web to visit weapon pits and other defensive positions, to talk to his men, to advise them as to the best use of their weapons and to cheer them with words of encouragement. When his force was finally relieved and he was satisfied that the turnover was complete, he fell asleep on his feet and collapsed. 
there can be no doubt that the success of this force text forces task on and stand against the enemy at St. Lombard Sir Deves can only be attributed to this officer's coolness, inspired leadership and skillful use of the limited weapons at his disposal. The courage and complete disregard for personal safety shown by Major Curry for, will forever be an inspiration to his regiment. His conspicuous bravery and extreme devo devotions to duty in the presence of the enemy, an example to the Canadian armory, Army of for all time. And I very much agree there. Major David and Vivian Curry was an amazing leader. And, well, throughout all his actions in the uh, Flowers Pocket campaign, he, he became such a good leader, in my opinion, that almost every leader of every aspect in life should uh, take a moment to just look at this guy, how he uh, formed his words, how he led his men, even when it was completely overrun by the enemy and in danger from all sides. So there was Behemoth and maybe I'll do a few more of um, these uh, moments from uh, colorized photos. I I like this a lot to actually talk about this. I've been talking almost uh, 12 minutes now. But if you want to hear more about these kind of actions, these kind of heroes, because Major David Vivian Curry was a true hero at his time in this action. So if you want to hear more about that, uh, give me a like, give it a comment, and of course give a like to those guys on Facebook for in World War II colorized photos. This was the Behemoth and I'm talking way too much now.